Hey everybody, and welcome back. Um, today is the food guide, and it's going to be like food, um, gardening, and some thoughts and ideas. I've split it up uh, between the, two, the four different tiers, so if you want to fast forward, hey, go right ahead. If this is informative, if you like it, smash the like, subscribe, and please leave me uh, any comments and chats below if I missed anything. Um, I'm going to try to update this, or at least put something on the end of it if they ever update and upgrade the food again in Icarus. I'm going to try to keep this updated. Uh, anyways, um, thanks and enjoy. <laughs> So in the beginning of the game, um, three fires, a little bit of hunting, and a little bit of foraging will give you your first three. Um, cooked meat, uh, barbecued carrots or pumpkin. Um, there's other things, like squash, um, corn. Uh, these are things that you can cook at the beginning. Um, let me put the the carrot in front of the pumpkin in front of the carrot, and we have a storm. So the only problem with camping on the beach is pretty much comes down to you will get a rainstorm. And when you get a rainstorm, you'll notice that your fires go up. Yep. So when that happens, basically you're just not cooking. Which, you know, it's fine. Um, storms pass. Uh, depending upon the severity of the storm. And when you, where, when in your playthrough you're getting it. Um, a storm too early is probably not very beneficial to you. So in your stomach, you have um, three spaces to start out with. Um, in the tech tree, uh, sorry, talent tree, you will notice under cooking and farming is food pyramid. Uh, this bus will give you one extra space in your stomach. Um, that'll give you four food buffs, which is nice, especially for the beginning of the game because um, you have to pay attention to where it says under stringy meat, cooked prime meat. Under cooked meat, it's cooked meat. Under the carrot, it's barbecued carrot. Now, these will give you the different buffs that are down below. Cooked meat, cooked prime meat, barbecued carrot. Um, there's another one for uh, watermelons. There's another one for wild berries. And you'll notice the berry buff, the watermelon buff. These are all fairly... Um, I'm not going to say they're all the same because they're not. A, uh, a plain carrot uh, is uh, 30 maximum health. So I knew that uh, it was a bad explanation, so I just cut to this. In Tier 1, you have the six meats that you could pick up by killing various animals and cooking them on a fire. These six meats have the exact same cooked prime meat buff I don't care. They get the same 30 health consumed and 150 food when consumed. And the buff is the same. The vegetables that you can pick up, depending upon the biome, are these seven. These can be cooked on the fire. I suggest you do it because regularly these are raw. They're not as good. Okay. Um, now the bottom two are only available through missions. The top three are available in the forest. The seared mushroom is available in the Arctic. And the roast squash is available in the desert. Now to add to this, there is cooked meat and cooked fish. So these are your different buffs at tier one. Okay. And I'll, I have to include this as tier one because in the um, tree... This is all tier one. Um, to go beyond this, you would have to get the crafting bench and go to tier two. So this is your tier one foods. Um, to uh, You can have three or four of these foods, depending on that, uh, if you take the talent for the extra uh, spot in your stomach. So take a screenshot. Um, this is uh, what you're looking at when you uh, gather uh, grab some stuff, farm some meat, kill some animals, grab their meat, and then cook it. This is what you got. 
Okay, so uh, in any food guide, we have to run through the drying rack. And um, in the drying rack, you'll see you have all of your dried game meat. There is a buff in here that you don't get from normal food. And it's the negative 25% food consumption buff. Okay, so under your character. Uh, under talents, you have the carbo loaded, which can give you the same. It's a neg negative 25% food consumption buff. Under cooking and farming, somewhere in here, you get a lot of benefits. 20% um, food effects duration. Remember, I have 10%. That's under my solo tree. So 10% food effects duration. You can, you can get a lot more under the food tree. Okay. So just wanted to point these kind of things out because this, this affects your food. Now, there's two... Let's call them counters. The one is an actual counter that you can read and see, and it counts down. This counter is how long you have this buff. Whatever you happen to have eaten in the game, and this buff will stay around for 986 more seconds. Okay. So when you eat dried gamey meat, you notice that it says negative 25% food consumption. Where that shows up is in this square. Well, how do you read that? Okay. So over here on the right-hand side, You'll see the show more button down below. Okay. Now remember, I have the negative 25% food consumption buff right now. So along this tree, you'll notice this is a big long, okay? But somewhere you'll find upkeep. And under food consumption, you'll see it's five per minute. Okay. Five what? Okay. Well, over here, your Enviro suit says that you have a maximum food capacity of 300. Okay. Alrighty. So that means this bar is 300. So 300 divided by 5 per minute, that's 60 minutes. Okay, because 60 minutes, all right, go the other way. 60 minutes times 5 per minute is 300. Okay, so this will last 60 minutes. A normal under here is not 5 per minute, it's 8 per minute. That is the normal. If you look at it and you have no food buffs, you'll see that this goes at 8 per minute. So 300 divided by 8 is 37 and a half minutes until this bar reaches the bottom and you are now dying. You are now getting hit points of damage and you are now dying. Okay. All righty. No problem. So remember that number, 37 and a half minutes. Down here, let's take the lowest food buff, which is 900 seconds. And let's eat ourselves. Uh, I already had some fruit salad, so let's do cream corn. Okay. So let's consume some cream corn. My remember, my talent, solo tree right here, 10% food buffs, sing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So let's just say that's 900 seconds. 900 seconds divided by 60 seconds in a minute gives me 15 minutes of this food buff. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm playing this game... I'm watching these at the bottom of my screen, left-hand side. You can see your food buffs right beside that temperature. Okay, that's where that shows up. So I'm watching these down there. I'm not really watching this one. I'm not saying I don't pay attention because it's right here. Like, it's right there. It's Okay, but I've noticed that I commonly want to replenish these buffs because if I don't, I have, like, I think my hit point bar is right here if I don't have any buffs on me, right? If I don't have the plus 75 max health, the 75, 75, right? If I don't have that, that bar is right around here. Uh, bear comes out of the bush, you're probably dead. So I'm not paying attention to this one. What I'm getting down to is this. If you are going to take your game beyond tier one, which is the campfire, look under your crafting, okay? The drying rack, the campfire, the fire pit, those are your first three. That's your tier one. Under your tech tree, go to tier one, campfire, drying rack, and fire pit. Okay? So if you're not going to tier two, if you're not going to make the crafting bench, and you're just going to stick there, probably the negative 25% food consumption might be a good idea. Right? But if you're going to go beyond, and you're going to go to tier one, sorry, tier two with the crafting bench, and you're going to make the cooking station... You're going to make the potbelly stove. If you're going to do that, 
This is a waste. Hey, everybody. So a little recap for you. Now, we're still in Tier 1, um, but I just wanted to kind of mention two things here. One is the dried meat, and I'm going to put them all up here in a second. Um, the gamey meat comes from uh, deer, buffalo, antelope. Uh, I call them goats. I don't know how to spell chamois, whatever, and zebras. The stringy meat comes from wolves, hyenas, cougars, um, leopards, cougars. You know what? It, I'm going by memory here. I, I know the cats give you stringy meat. Um, but also we've gotten um, stringy meat from the scorpions. Uh, soft meat comes from scorpions, the, the rabbits. I do believe both kinds, the forest and the snow. And then your baby deer will drop you soft meat. Um, the white meat comes from boars. I do not recall ever getting white meat from anything but a boar. Then there's um, giant steak. And giant steak is awesome. It's great. Look at the boffs. Woohoo! Uh, it comes from elephants and mammoths. So if you're not in the desert, you ain't getting giant steaks. And then um, fatty T-bones. And fatty T-bones come from bears and polar bears. Um, you'd probably be much more likely to get it off a bear because uh, I usually die to polar bears, but let's, let's not go there. Anyways, um, the other two, I'm going to include them, dried rhubarb and dried avocados. Now, uh, those just come from the missions. So I'm going to kind of leave them alone a little bit. Now, well, actually, you know what? Let's touch upon them real quick. So the dried avocado looks awesome. Negative 40% food consumption. And if you're not going past tier one, woohoo. Okay. You won't be, um, eating very much food. Um, but you will, as I've just done the math, you're still going to want that plus 75 max stamina because that buff is going to go away. So the dried rhubarb is uh, negative 30% oxygen consumption. Ooh, hey, uh, yeah, okay. So you mix the 30% oxygen consumption, you put in that food consumption. Uh, maybe you can find something for a little less water consumption. Okay, that sounds like a great combo. Um, so anyways, uh, I put these in these categories because you're probably not going to get too much um, white meat if you're not going to be in boar territory. You're not going to find giant steaks if you're not in the desert. And if you're in the desert, you're not going to find fatty T-bones because that comes from the bears. So seeing as how the dried gamey meat, stringy meat are, I'm going to call them the most prevalent. They're, they're the ones we find all the time when me and my wife play in this and we're... Uh, um, deciding what meat we're going to grab and we are just doing like a tier one quick build, you know, get some done in a, in a cave, grab some arrows and, and get out on the road as fast as possible. One of us will take gamey meat. The other one will take stringy meat. Um, she does find soft meat every once in a while because she'll kill rabbits or a baby deer, but she doesn't come back with that stuff for too often. Like, cause she's doing the farming and I'm doing the mining. So it's normally gamey meat which uh, in the forest biome, which is where I'm at right now, is your deer, uh, your buffaloes, and I do not know how to say chamois. Why didn't they just call it a goat? Because it goes, bah, does it not? Anyway, so the stringy meat um, comes from your wolves, which is, I mean, that's basically where you find all your stringy meat in the forest, in, in, in this biome anyways. But, I mean, abroad, I mean, you will uh, find... If you do an event, you'll find the cougars. Uh, if you go into the uh, snow or the Arctic biome, you'll find the snow leopards. If you go into the desert, you'll find the cougars. Um, the hyenas and scorpions. I know scorpions drop stringy meat. I should probably look it up, but I know they do. It's not often, but they do do it. Um, scorpions are more for the soft meat. Uh, which is as well as rabbits and baby deer. So that's kind of, I'll, I'll write, I got that up all on the screen. Um, but that's kind of my breakdown for tier one. Uh, the last little recap I did showed you the biomes that the, those, these um, six come from. And then the, um, let's just, yeah, basically that's where the six come from. Uh, meat comes from, like regular meat comes from pretty much any animal that you kill can pretty much give you meat um maybe not the scorpions but oh i'm gonna go with just about every other animal in the game will drop you regular meat anyway i hope this uh is helping you if it is hey drop a like uh leave me a comment let me know if i missed anything i tried to be pretty uh thorough in this um if i'm gonna do a, a how-to or a guide or whatever i'm gonna try to be as thorough as i can anyway let's go on to tier two
You go right ahead. I'm going to uh, sit and enjoy this view for a minute and dream about when we get fishing rods in this game. So I, I do not um, um, suggest you build thatch. And my reason for this is that if you look in your tech tree, um, thatch is right above wood. And when you are choosing where to put your points, I would start out placing them down in wood, not in thatch. And here's the reason why. Durability 500 and a wood structure has a durability of 1,000. That's double. Um, so the difference between the two of them is pretty simple. Um, a thatch floor is fiber and stick. A wood floor is fiber and wood. Now, if you've watched my beginning series, um, you get stone axe and stone pickaxe I would call it almost immediately. I mean, all you got to do is pick up a few items off the ground, and you can get the two of those going. A stone axe will get you wood. Uh, it'll chop down trees just fine. And so you can skip the whole thatch and go to double the hit points. That's, I don't know about you, but uh, I, I choose the wood. So uh, give me a sec, and I'll build a proper house for you. And the only reason I'm pointing this out is um, so that you know why I didn't build the first house in thatch. That's all. If you didn't want to build a house, you can just build a fire pit. You can build a fire pit or campfire. Um, these will cook your vegetables. I like the fire pit because it's a lot bigger. And yes, I was hoping oh, it was just winds. Okay, I was hoping for a rainstorm. Okay, oh well. Um, this will protect your fire. You might have to put, um, you know, some out, some other you know, along the sides, you know, and along the. But this will protect your fire so that you can cook while you're out and about. Um, I myself like to use uh, multiple campfires at times rather than a fire pit. A fire pit will cost you uh, 125. Whereas a fire campfire will cost you twenty four to eight nine. Okay, so uh, much more expensive on the on the campfire, um, or much more exp expensive on the fire pit. Sorry, but this will keep your fire going outside, and you don't have to build a big huge house. Uh, this will still do all of the tier one foods that you want it to do. Um, okay, so just wanted to show you that. So you've graduated your way from uh, living on the beach to a house. Uh, this is a very basic house. It has no windows to it. It's got a little bit of stuff. Um, but now that you've made it this far, uh, you've got a little bit of uh, um, uh, smelting going on. Uh, you got a fire. You're cooking up your meat. Um, I went fishing. I got meat going. Uh, I don't have any vegetables. Yes, I do. I got some vegetables left over. From here, you get yourself some stone and iron ingots. We'll put this guy here. Okay, so from that cooking station, uh, we can make the first three basic foods, which are cream corn, wild salad, and fruit salad. Now, uh, you got your baits in there, but you also got mixed berry and stuffed avocado. But the strawberries and the avocados uh, come from the open world missions and you have to complete um, uh, missions uh, from the radio station from that. So uh, although I'm going to show you these, um, I'm going to start with the beginnings. Now, from the beginning, just farming up a little bit of stuff, you can make yourself fruit salad. And if you compare fruit salad with the barbecued carrot, which I'm already making, You'll notice that it's already 75.75, which this is only 75 for stamina. Um, the personally, anyways, I mean, yeah, 5% projectile damage. Okay, yeah, it's nice, but when you get right down to it, you want more hit points and more stamina. Um, so I like to replace cooked meat uh, as fast as I can. Stringy, not so, let me remember the cooked prime meat buff, not so hard to replace. Uh, you'll notice that it's uh, 20 health regeneration per minute. It's 100 maximum stamina, 150 maximum health. In this game, any food that gives you stamina and health, pay attention to it. Um, remember, this guide isn't a do this, do that. So you should be right about here. Uh, all of your stuff can be salted. That's why you should take um, and try as fast as you can. 
it's not that many ingredients get some charcoal some wood some stone some fiber together get that salting station going and then as you go out in the world and go mine salt okay you will be able to get this table going which um i'll go see if i can't find some corn making animal fat is really easy which means the cream corn which once again 75 max stem 150 health now the other bonuses on top they're nice no, no arguments they're nice okay but I will go cream corn and fruit salad over and above just a single, like 150 to max stam. I'm not saying there's anything bad about 150 to max stamina, but if I can have the cooked prime meat buff, okay, the fruit salad, and then the cream corn. So give me a sec. I know there's corn. So with a very sick uh, amount of farming, I just ran around and grabbed a bunch of stuff. Um, you can get oh, I got seven fruit salads some cream corn together uh, which I'll make you some now need water right so um, the bladder will take care of this uh, water issue um, the bladder you get from here it's uh, water skin pretty easy to make leather fiber bone I mean if you're out there farming stuff already making a bladder is not that difficult or you are, you have the Hulu canteen, in which case you bring that with you. So cream corn, well, this is a little bit nicer um, if you look at it in respect to the fruit salad. If you're comparing those two, well, then the cream corn to me is a little bit better. Um, not because of the other bonuses. Remember, uh, I don't want to say I don't take the other bonuses into consideration. I do. But... In the beginning of the game, if you're looking at having 100 and 150, skip the health regeneration for just a second, you don't want the cooked meat, okay? You actually, in the if you're going to make the cooking station, you want to go with these three. You want to go with the fruit salad. Why? Two buffs, 75-75, plus some extra. Second, cream corn, 75-150. Woohoo! look at that health, okay? Once again, not saying anything against negative 10 stamina consumed actions, but I'm really looking at the health and the stamina. And once again, 100 and 150. So you're looking at plus 300 health, 175 stam. Uh, so make that 375 health and 100, 250 stam. Okay, not including the rest. Much better than if you used, say, cooking some vegetables uh, or the regular meat, right, which just has one buff. Once again, go with two buffs. Now, do you want to have some meat on the side? Yes, you do. And I like to use fish for this. Um, 80 food when consumed, 30 health when consumed. Um, the only thing that you can make fish out of at this point in time is fish curry, and you'll notice it's not in this bench. Okay, so I'm going to say at this time in your game. Okay, um, fish are so easy to, to, to get. It's just jump in a pool with a, with a big stick in your hand or even use your bow if you have extra arrows. I would use stone arrows myself. They're not hard to kill. And boom, you've got a bunch of fish. As you get more stone or, or more uh, iron into your, uh, you can build the potbelly stove. Um, it takes copper. It takes epoxy. It takes iron ingots. Once you get into past tier one, which is just a basic campfire, you could also call the fireplace tier one, but you need to build a bench. So you need to be in the tech tree. You need to be a tier two to be able to get the crafting bench. Okay, so tier one food is pretty much the campfire. Now, before that disappears, look at that health buff. <laughs> that came from fish curry. Fish curry is really easy to get in the forest biome because you're looking at soybean, you're looking at raw fish, animal fat, comes from the cooking station as animal fat remember you're taking your raw meat and you're turning that into raw animal fat whatever you're not cooking up in your stove okay so now fried funky vegetables good stuff but once again we're looking at kumara kumara is only attainable as for right now anyways i don't think you can find it in the wild i've never found it i don't know whether you can this new food is still a little bit new to me i've only done i think three uh, playthroughs of, of stuff, uh, a couple of missions and a little bit in our open world. 
and we were able to get it in the open world. I have not found it um, in the missions. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it, according to the updates, it's saying you have to get it through the Simple 3 mission. Okay, same thing with Rhubarb. You have to get it through the Simple mission. So Funky Fried ve- or fried Chunky Vegetables is out. Rhubarb Stew is out. Unless you bring it with you and farm it, meaning you put it into uh, a... Uh, wild wood crop plot you know what i mean and go there okay so that pretty much handles uh roast vegetables same thing if you are in the desert biome then you're not going to have carrots unless you come to the forest and grab carrots uh unless you're in the forest biome and then you go into the desert and go get some squash all of these things are very possible it's just not really quick and easy um soybean stir fry mushrooms Mushrooms come from the Arctic biome inside the caves. So unless you've gone and gone and farmed it or brought it with you and made a crop plot, you're not making the stew, the soybean stir fry, or the roast vegetables anytime soon. Same with the mushroom soup. But sweet corn soup, you can make that pretty quick. Uh, Fish curry, you can make that pretty quick. So you'll notice the three buffs I have on me are what I call tier two buffs. Okay, I call these tier two buffs. Okay, in which case it's a fruit salad, a cream corn, and a fish curry. Very, very simple to make. And you'll notice my hit bar, pinpoint bar is off the, the charts. And my stamina bar, I'll run around a little bit for you. My stamina bar is looking pretty good. Okay, so now you've progressed in the game and you, uh, you want to build a garden. So I strongly suggest you enclose it, but leave the roof open for now. Uh, the reason for that is for watering. Um, you can get away with uh, letting nature do its thing or right button fairly easy to water these things uh, when they need watering you will notice the uh, right hand side I'm sorry left hand side you'll notice the left hand side uh, where it says the check mark under watering uh, you'll notice the other one is um, well, let's the crop plot is in a good location and will likely receive a good amount of sunlight for growth. So you can't put crop plots in a cave and get that buff. Can you put them in a cave? Yes, you can. <laughs> We've done it. We've grown everything inside a cave, and it is workable. Um, the sunlight or the uh, sunroof or whatever you want to call that thing that's inside caves, yeah, that doesn't help for this. You'll notice that that modifier is not um, helpful or that um, sunroof or whatever is not helpful. Um, now, you can get plus 50% on this if you put glass. Uh, I am not at glass at this point in time in my build because I'm still what I'm going to refer to as Tier 2. So at Tier 2, we have the cooking station, we have the potbelly stove, and uh, we can get these plots going. Inside each one of these plots, you'll notice that I have watermelon. You put it in and it said seed watermelon crop growth if you have fertilizer by the way you don't once you get one piece in there you don't need to leave the other ones in there okay same with wheat i got a little bit of wheat going Uh, i got a little bit of pumpkin i got some yeast i got carrots i got soybean i got corn and i got wild berries if you've watched any of our playthrough series you will know that underneath those two modifiers there's a whole lot more modifiers that you can put if you put your te- your talents into cooking and farming, which is what we did for my wife. Okay, we put hers in. That way she makes better crop plots. She makes better food. Her food doesn't decay or anything. Yeah, it's, it's, um, but once again, now you're looking at, do, are you playing solo? Are you playing with, with friends and all the rest of that? So this basically concludes the uh, tier two food. This is what you can get. So for this recap, I'm going to tackle these in two different sections because there's just not enough room on the screen to put these all up. So for the cooking station, which is probably the first one you're going to build, um, let's tackle fruit salad, which is uh, the 7575. Okay, double buff. I I like it. The oxygen consumption, water consumption, that's just a bonus on top. It's basically uh, icing on the cake. The other one would be creamed corn. Now, um, creamed corn is once again two buffs 75 and 150 and the 10 stamina consumed by action is nice uh, sprinklings on the uh, on the icing tray you know but 
these two foods in this biome are easy to make, meaning the watermelon and the wild berry. So uh, the wild salad just below, if you're in the uh, riverlands or if you're in the forest biome, okay, you're getting pumpkin, but you're not getting squash. If you're in the desert, you're getting squash, but you're not getting pumpkin. That's why I put it off to the side. So you are going to bring something along with you depending upon the mission or the, the open world or whatever you're doing. Now, the other ones on the other side, the mixed berries and the stuffed avocado, okay, so 150 max stamp, nice, but single single stat, just like the wild salad, single stat, 150. It's nice, it's 150, but it's still, if you look at the cream corn, that's 75 max stamp and 150 health. So that's two. I will always go with two buffs uh, handling both stamina and health before I go with a single. The stuffed avocado is 75, 75. It's nice if you're going to be bringing food with you, consider the avocado. Uh, soybeans are easy to get in the forest and the riverlands biomes. Um, and it's 10 health regen and negative 10 food consumption. Um, negative 10, I mean, whatever, but the 10 health regen is nothing to be uh, balked at. Uh, in the mixed berries, the 10% experience gain, and well, okay, water consumption is nice. But if you are looking for, low, if you're lower level and you're looking for experience and you have the strawberries and you're coming into the, the forest biome, mixed berries is an option. Um, that's about it for the, uh, cooking station. So when it comes to the pot belly stove, uh, it's the second thing you'll build and running through all of the foods. Now I included the sweet corn soup because believe it or not, it has a purpose. I'm going to get to that after, but let's go, uh, let's go mushroom soup. Uh, basically if you're not in the Arctic, the mushroom soup, the stew and the soybean stir fry are kind of out of your reach unless you bring mushrooms with you, okay? Um, I, the soybean stir fry is awesome, 150 and 75 health, you know, some projectile damage, really good, I'll call it hunting because of the health regen, stamina regen, and projectile damage. Um, really good hunting food to take with you because you get the, the health, you get some stam. Um, the stew, it's nice, uh, same thing, projectile damage, so if you mix the soybean stir fry with the stew, then you're getting 300 health, you're getting 150 stam, you're getting 20% uh, stam regen, 20% uh, health regen, and 20% projectile damage. Those are two really nice foods to stick together. I mean, hey, if you're bringing the mushroom, you know, or if you're near an Arctic biome and you've went and gotten mushrooms, and then you're in the forest and you've got the carrots and the soybean, those are two good foods to put together. Mushroom soup, mmm. I'm sorry, I don't have much use for mushroom soup. I, I Sorry, I don't. It doesn't mix well with him because it's, it's uh, stam regen and maximum health. Okay, well, you can get that from other things. So, uh, But I had to include it because it is in the popular stove. Now, my favorite here is fish curry. Uh, health regen, stam regen, and 225 max health. It's not necessarily for that because I'm not, you know me, not much for single stats. But that stuff is so easy to make in the forest and the... Um, uh, the which one call it the river biome it's 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 so easy to make it's not funny the roast vegetables okay well if you're uh, near the desert and you're near the forest then you can right no problem um exposure resistance nice if you're caught in the storm i'm not often caught in storms but if you're caught mealy damage i'm not a mealy person uh, unless i go fishing in which case i'm fishing with a knife um but the projectile damage uh, that's nice to have uh, I included the crispy bacon because of, um, well, the experience gained. That's about it. I mean, it's got two buffs, 90 health and 90 stem. It's nice. And I think it's one of the few foods that actually has crit damage as well. So, but I I can't say as I often use that food. Uh, now, for the sweet corn soup. Um, if you're farming in a cave and you are constantly mining or you're constantly out doing, um, say, chopping down trees, uh negative 20 percent stamina consumed by actions nice seriously nice and if you pair that with something else that has it well now you're plus 100 percent maximum stam and you're not using as much stamina in your actions uh mix that with a stamina regen food and well now you see the point behind it so the rhubarb stew and the fried chunky vegetables we're back to mission specific or loadout um food Basically, you're bringing it with you or you're uh, in an open world and you've gotten it from the mission. 
Uh, but hey, I mean, fried chunky vegetables, awesome stuff. 75 health, 150 stam, exposure resistance. And if you're a melee uh, player, then hey, plus 10 melee attack speed. Uh, mix that with uh, something else that has melee attack. And psh, wow, you know, good stuff. Um, rhubarbs too. Not as much of a fan. Um, but if you look at the uh, sweet corn soup with the negative 20 stamina consumed by actions and then the negative 10 stamina consumed by rhubarb stew, well, now you're starting to pair some foods together that if you're going farming, well, sweet corn soup and rhubarb stew can become some farming food for you. So if you were to ask me what my picks would be, um, let's live in a world where I have every food available to me. Um, I've brought it all with me. I'm farming it. So I have my choice as to what I'm going to throw together. Okay, so under the hunting, farming, and experience category, it would have to be for farming, sweet corn syrup, syrup, <laughs> sweet corn soup, uh, because of the stamina and the negative 20 uh, stamina consumed by actions, the rhubarb stew, more stamina. Um, in this instance, I don't care about the oxygen consumption, the water consumption, but that's nice. And, but it's the 10% stamina consumed. And then, of course, the cream corn, uh, 75 stam. It gives you some health, which is nice because you do need some. Um, but the 10% stamina consumed by actions. So basically, you're looking at negative 30 consumed by actions and negative 10 stamina consumed. Those are perfect for whether you're in a cave farming uh, uh, nodes or whether you're uh, chopping down trees. For hunting... Uh, you want, and myself, uh, I'm looking at uh, projectile damage. I'm not a melee hunter, so and neither is my wife. We're both projectile hunters. So uh, you're looking at stew, soybean stir-fry, and roast vegetables. You get a really good mix of uh, health and stam, um, with a whole lot of stamina on the far end for the roast vegetables for running around, but it's the projectile damage. So all told, you're looking at plus 30% projectile damage and a whole host of other stuff that's really nice for regens and, and whatnot. Um, for experience, now I'm, I'm not too worried about this, so I didn't, I mean, I'm not going to put too much thought to this, but I mean, there are people that are still uh, out there um, leveling and such. So for that one, we're looking at crispy bacon, mixed berries, and cooked bacon. Uh, only because 15 and 15 is 30 plus 10% uh, is... Uh, you're looking at 40% experience gain. That's, I mean, I remember other games where I was, uh, you know, clawing around for 10% sometimes, you know, putting some gear sets together and whatnot. And I'm 10%, I thought I was doing good. Uh, leveling armor and wow, you know, just or leveling gear, gear and wow. Um, so when it comes down to this one, I mean, 40%, yeah, skip the other stuff, you know, to the, I don't know, what do you get out of that one? Really good stam and decent hit points, 165 health and 100 and 200, 315 stamina. So you're good for running around, decent enough for hit points. No, you're not going to want to tick on too many bears in a row, but decent enough. Anyways, there's my picks, um, and we will now move on to uh, Tier 3. So by this time, you're at Tier 3. You've uh, built yourself a, a stone house, greenhouse. And that greenhouse is, you know, surrounded in glass. Um, make sure you put uh, flooring up there to protect your glass. Otherwise, your glass is going to get broken in the near storm. Uh, you'll notice it's storming out right now, and the nasty part of the storm is coming, and my glass is still just fine. This is not reinforced glass, by the way, because, well, I don't have water. Because I don't have a water pump. Because water pumps are in the fabrication bench. So that's Tier 4. So you should be at this point in Tier 2. You should be farming... Uh, growing all the stuff that you need for your uh, for your food, and uh, you should have the the basics of a greenhouse together, either attached to or apart from your house. Uh, in your house, you've progressed now to the kitchen bench, the biofuel stove. You'll need the biofuel composter to make the fuel for the biofuel stove, and you've of course got the machining bench. Uh, I upgrade my cabinets because well, you know you need more storage. And that's pretty much tier two. Now, in the back here, I, of course, to CAD do expand the house. And I've got the, uh, the glass workbench, uh, the car, you know what I mean, to uh, get myself all the stuff that I need so that I can build all this. You know, I'll just leave it so I can build all this stuff. Now, in the kitchen bench, you'll notice that now the potbelly stove is gone. So you don't need it anymore once you've got these two, the biofuel stove and the kitchen bench. So in here, um, 
basically the only thing in this playthrough where I'm at right now, I can only make pickled carrots and berry jam. For each one of those, you still need glass jars. So you're still going to have to uh, farm silica to get glass, uh, fire up that glass in the uh, concrete furnace so that you have glass, so that you can, yeah, you know what I mean? So that you can now go to your glass bench and glass jars still take glass and iron ingots to make. The only place you can get glass from is by firing silica in the concrete furnace. So now you've progressed this far. Okay, now you're looking at um, pickled carrots, which is uh, st a single uh, benefit to your, like, just maximum stam. Uh, it's got 20% shared experience gain, but remember that's shared experience. So if you've been playing with somebody else and you notice in the upper left-hand corner, right beside where it says 622 blueprint points, up there, and I, my wife's not on right now, so I can't show it to you. <clears throat> watch any one of our playthroughs you'll see shared experience up there once in a while now to me this is not a great and grandiose buff it isn't okay the 20 percent projectile damage that's nice that's good farming okay when you're out there killing beasts and whatnot um 150 max stam nothing wrong with it berry jam 150 maximum stamina negative 20 percent water consumption remember we talked about food consumption water consumption so that's that in your uh inventory that's this one right here Okay, where I have let it run down. So, that is pretty much now. There's also the pickled avocado. Okay, if you have avocados. 20% food consumption, some shared experience again. Okay, same thing, 125 max stamp. This is for the strawberry jam. Okay, but you're not going to get strawberries or avocados unless you bring them with you and, far and put them in your farm. Um, the other ones in here are just the, the pills. Uh, much better than the tonics, but they're just the pills. I myself never make wine or beer. So... In the biofuel stove, though, in my current situation where I'm at, I can only make the pickled bread or the pumpkin bread, the bread, the fish curry, the fruit pie, the crumbed fish fillet, and the crispy bacon. Those are the only ones that I can make. Now, the other ones that are in there, oh, I'm sorry, I can make the sweet corn syrup soup. Sorry. Um, I can't make the mushroom. I can't make the stew. I can't make the uh, the roast vegetables are out because of the squash. The fruit pie's in, but the meat pie because of the mushroom is out. The vegetable pie because of the squash is out. The rhubarb stew, the fried chunky vegetables, the shepherd's roll, the savory roll, the vegetable roll, the muffin. They're all out as far as this for me. Now, I will run through all of these, believe me. But in this current playthrough, this is what I have available to me. Uh, as far as stuff that I can readily farm easily, not bring anything with me. So what's the best stuff here? So we're back at what's becoming my favorite view. I can't wait for a fishing rod. Um, and a cold beer and a, you know, anyways. Um, so <laughs> tier three, uh, the new bench is the kitchen bench. Uh, it does not take over from anything. Uh, unlike the biofuel stove takes over from pot belly. The kitchen bench is new. You need to keep the kitchen station. So berry jam. The, the four new foods that are in the in the kitchen bench um, consumes uh, 125 max stamina, 20 water consumption, 10% uh, experience gain, but it's shared experience once again. The pickled carrots are the same thing. It's uh, stamina, some projectile damage, which is nice for the farming, which I'm now pickled carrots take over uh, for one of the, the farming picks in the previous uh, tier two. And then 20% experience, shared experience. Uh, once again, if you're not playing multiplayer, mm, shared experience isn't really a big deal. So um, now for the stuff that you're going to need to uh, have either load out a queer gear or be in a, an open world, the strawberry jam, 20% experience gained. So that takes over for one of the bacons, you know, for experience. And then um, for the avocado, I mean, it. I don't want to say it's no good, but... It's just that 20% food consumption again. I, I just don't find that buff to be all that special. So anyways, that takes care of the kitchen vents. Let's move on to the stove. Okay, so on the biofuel stove, I'm going to take this in two sections just because of the size of the um, um, the little pictures in this and the amount of them. So we uh, we start with the fruit pie. Um, the instance of pies, now you have to start making pastry. The pastry comes from all the wheat and the fat that you've been collecting. So pay attention. There's a lot of, um, it becomes more um, structured, more difficult up here. But it's not that 
it's not impossible. So fruit pie is uh, 150 stem. It's oxygen consumption, water consumption, and experience gain. So that goes into my experience uh, category of, of good stuff. But it still has 75 and 150 for double uh, uh, stat bonuses. Then the meat pie, it's a single stat bonus for 225 health, but exposure resist, health regen, stamina regen. This is uh, this is a decent run around the world buff um, for for a food. Um, the vegetable pie, same thing, 150, 150 for stamina and and, sta- and health, um, uh, health regeneration, experience gain, melee damage. Um, I like the 15 consumed by actions, so that turns in you know a favorite of mine for when I'm farming and whatnot. Um, so the uh, next one was pumpkin bread, uh, 150 max stamp, some exposure resist and experience gain. Not a favorite of it unless you need some experience. So crumbed fish fillet, uh, 10 experience gained. Once again, I am not a huge fan of this one because uh, it doesn't really carry uh, much for me um, as far as extra bonuses. The 150 health and, and 75 stamina is nice. Uh, the fruit muffin, if you've got the specialty foods and whatnot, Yep, great, wonderful, Uh, 35% experience gained on this one. Uh, So now you're getting into some higher-end stuff, and you can start mix to match uh, some of these foods together. And this is where you really kind of want to have that fourth place in your stomach, I'll be honest. If you're doing the experience, um, this way you can get as much experience as possible. So you might want to try to weave your way down there. And then once you get there, respec once you've get up. So um, for the the ones I did include, that just because the screen gets too full of stuff, is uh, still in the biofuel stove. Um, and these are the three rolls. So the shepherd's roll, 150-150, uh, health regen, attack speed, projectile damage, good hunting food. The savory roll, uh, 225 health, 75 stem. Uh, I don't much care about that, that food consumption one, but health regen, stamina regen, and 10 experience gained. Uh, all nice stuff. And the vegetable roll, 150, 150. Oxygen consumption on this one, some exposure resistance, health regen, and 10 experience gained. So all three of these are good experience food. Um, some fairly top-end stuff. So now that I've covered all the foods, I'm going to go back and give you my top picks. So you'll notice by this time, um, I didn't mention where these come from in the uh, in the Tier 3. I think by this time, if you're getting to Tier 3, you're fairly organized. You know what you're bringing. So I didn't um, put them in two different groups and whatnot as to what you can get. Tier 2 is a little different. Tier 1 is way different. Um, folks down there might not be as ahead. So for my picks, I'm going to take each one of them separately. So first I'm going to do farming. Um, when you go farming in this, believe it or not, we're going to still stick with the first one, sweet corn soup. Uh, 20% stamina consumed by actions. Uh, you can't get better than that. Next one is vegetable pie. It's a negative 15 consumed by actions, plus a bunch of other stuff. Then for the third, um, it's a tie between rhubarb stew and cream corn. And here's my thinking there. Um, cream corn has the negative 10 consumed by actions, but the rhubarb stew has negative 10% of all stamina consumed. Now I'm not Absolutely sure, but I do believe it still counts. And then when you're looking at rhubarb stew, you're looking at negative uh, plus 225 stam. So you will last longer. You also have the, the negative oxygen water consumption. Um, whereas the cream corn, it gives you the health, but it only gives you 75 stam. So if you have four spots, hey, no brainer, take all four. But if you have three spots... It, I'm going to leave it up to you as to, as to which the third food is. I think the vegetable pie and the sweet corn soup are, that's, May said, you have to take those. That's 35% consumed by actions. And then you're adding 10% for the last third food. Hey, that's 45%. You're almost at 50%. You'll mine forever. You'll chop trees forever. Uh, one way to think of it is if you're out chopping trees, take the cream corn. If you're in a mine, take the rhubarb stew. That's one way to think of it because you're not doing a lot of combat in the in the mines. But anyways, so hunting gets a little interesting um, because there's melee and ranged. So we're going to start with the shepherd's roll. Um, that is, it has both. It's got melee and projectile. Uh, 150, 150. It is a great piece of food. Um, second would be pickled carrots um, because it has um, 20%, 20% uh, 
uh, projectile damage. Um, the 150 stamina, well, you need stamina when you're out hunting. I don't know about you, but I've run out of stamina, and then I'm sitting there with my bow in my hand and nothing to do. So the next two foods on the uh, on the ranged end of things, or projectile, is stew and soybean stir-fry. Okay, if you take a really good close look at these, these are the exact same food. I mean, not, seriously, the exact same food. 150 max to health, 75 to stam, 10% of projectile, 10% stam regen, 10% health regen. You could take um, both of those if you had four slots, but... I, I, I put roast vegetables at the end for a reason. Um, it has 225 max stam. Uh, like I said, you you might want more stamina in your hunting. Um, roast vegetables also works for both. Like the shepherd's roll, it has melee and projectile damage. So depending upon which way you're hunting. Now, funky fr uh, fried chunky vegetables. Um, nice stuff. Exposure resist, melee attack, um, stamina. Uh, over the health, like, like more stamina over the health. I still believe in lots of stamina. Um, melee, you're going to need more health, um, but there's not a lot of choice here because the wild salad, well, it comes in, it has melee damage, but it has no health. And then um, the roast vegetables at the end, well, once again, it's got no health. I tried, I scoured for more melee attack speed stuff. I couldn't find any. So melee attack speed, melee damage, I just couldn't find it. Um so I'm going to leave this for, for you to kind of piece through. I personally am a ranged guy, so I will be going shepherd's roll. I will be going either the stir fry or the soup, uh, or the stew, I mean, and probably the pickled carrot. I might go with the roast veggies over the stew or the, or the soybean. I'm not absolutely sure, but that's probably where I sit with it. So the experience category was equally a little bit difficult to give you a tried and true one, two, three step through it. So um, we start out with the fruit muffin, absolutely 35% experience gained. Um, if you're just going for an experience build and you really want to pump it hard, it, you have to go pumpkin bread for 15. But then after that, it's going to come down to availability of the food. Now, if you have everything, no big deal. Then it comes down to your choice of maybe you got a mealy build or maybe you want more of this regen or maybe you want more or less consumptions or uh, maybe you want more of the stats, the health or the stamina. Because you can have any one of the three pies or any one of the three rolls. Now, I myself would go with the rolls. They are a better food. Uh, which one? Well, I mean, I hate to leave you hanging here, but it's really going to come down to what you want. Um, in these choices, there's uh, two in there for melee attack speed, or well, melee damage and melee attack speed. So if you're a melee guy, it, you know what I mean? It's It, it really, you're going to have to look, and the rest are all mostly regens, um, exposure resistance, Oh, it looks like there's like a food consumption in there. There's, I mean, these sorts of things. But this, once you get past the fruit muffin and the pumpkin bread, well, you have one choice. I mean, unless you got four spots in your stomach, you got one more to do. It's really going to come down to convenience. They're all 10%. So for my mind, I think it's just creating this. This was a pretty easy pick for me. Uh, I would just go fruit muffin and pumpkin bread and then whatever was the most convenient. Because, to be honest, with all of those, it really doesn't matter unless you have a melee guy. Unless you have, uh, maybe you're outside a lot and you want some exposure resistance or some oxygen consumption, you know, lesser oxygen. It, maybe you want that food consumption one. I don't like it, but maybe, you know, these are the things to look at. Um, I, I, if I was to have to make a choice, I think I would go with the vegetable roll. Uh, my reason is oxygen consumption. You don't have to fill your tank as much. Exposure resistance. Uh, I get caught out in storms quite a bit. 30% uh, health regeneration. And then you get your 10 experience. So the vegetable roll to me is that's kind of the mainstay. A final note uh, on this and, and maybe a parting gift. I personally run around with the three vegetable rolls. If I'm just running around the world, if I'm just, you know, basically hop, skipping and jumping and doing stuff and not really actively um, farming or actively going out and, and hunting. If, I, if I'm just running around, I like the three vegetable rolls. Uh, but my wife does all the cooking and she does all the farming. These are not easy. 
Um, there is a lot of ingredients in those rolls that is not simple to put together. Um, so a final note on all of this is that it comes down to what you is available to you, what you are willing and able to farm, what you came in with. Are you playing with friends? Or are you not? Um, being that I play a lot with my wife and with friends as well, but a lot with my wife, she has all the farming. Her food doesn't go bad. Her crop plots that she makes and the food that she puts in those crop plots doesn't go bad. Her plants don't wilt. So that there's a lot of factors in this. That's why to me, I had to make a guide that didn't say one, two, three, you have to do this. No, because there's so many permeating factors on this. Um, but anyway, I hope this uh, helped out. So I'm back. Um, I just finished sleeping. Uh, and I got the well-rested buff. I'll put a uh, screenshot of that up. I got a couple different shots of that. Um, the way you get it now is, uh, well, you should be at tier four by now. Um, whether you make a concrete structure or not doesn't really matter. What, what you do with it doesn't really matter. Um, you are going to want a greenhouse. You are going to want to power and water it. And then you got to run water into your house. By this time, you may or may not have the plumb sink, you know what I mean, the, the tier four kitchen. You should have a refrigerator. You should have a deep freeze. The deep freeze, in case you don't know it, creates ice, which means you're going to have to keep throwing that ice out. Okay. Um, but it will continue to make ice and, and it will continue to take up spots in your deep freeze. You just got to, you just got to toss it out every once in a while. It's no big deal. But if you'll notice down at the bottom of the fruit salad, it said will not spoil. So as long as you get this stuff fairly quickly into here and the power doesn't run out, this stuff will last forever. You know what I mean? Like really it, it does not spoil. So that's a little bit different than the fridge because in the fridge things do spoil. They just spoil a lot slower. And once again, if your fridge ever runs out of power, well, it's not working anymore. The uh, biggest difference uh, is in this plumbed sink. Um, when you push the button, you'll notice that green buff came up. Okay, It's a well-washed buff. Uh, better crafting speed, movement speed, health regeneration, but 15% sleep quality. Okay, so a bedroll, if we go to our crafting, is 100% sleep quality. 600 seconds of the well-rested buff. The wooden bed, oops, eh, the wooden bed, which comes out of the carpentry bench, is 150% sleep quality and 900 seconds of the well-rested buff. Okay, so this is, I just wanted to show you this because the sink adds to this well-rested buff. Well-rested, uh, with an extra, you'll notice, 65% down there. So 17 to maximum health, 9 percent It's nice. You know, I mean, basically, it's nice. It slows down food consumption, water consumption. It increases stamina and uh, max stamina and health regeneration. So it's nice. All you got to do is walk over, press F, touch the sink. That's it. Press to wash. That's it. You got to plumb it, of course. You got to put some water in it and whatnot. So anyways, back to the food. You'll notice that the... Um, the potbelly stove is gone. The biofuel stove is gone. Uh, the cooking station is gone. And the kitchen bench is gone. Okay. So when you get to this level in Tier 4, and these are made back here, fabrication bench. Okay. And, I mean, you need all the rest of the stuff to get to that point. But anyways, in here, the electric stove. So the electric stove takes over from the biofuel stove which takes over from the pot belly stove. Meaning, once you build the biofuel stove, it is the tier three machining bench stove, you can build and make anything and everything that you can do in the pot belly stove, okay? But you don't need the pot belly no more because now you've got that plus shepherd's roll, savory roll, vegetable roll, fruit muffin, uh, it's just top of my head. I mean, I'm sure there's some other stuff, but once you get to the electric stove, you can do everything that you could do in the pot belly, that you could do in the biofuel, and now you've got extras. You've got the tea, the gorse tea, the hot cocoa, and the hot coffee. Okay, you'll notice these four right here. Okay, I made three of them I because I, I wanted to show you something. So you'll notice that I have three buffs. Three food buffs. I only have three spots in my stomach. I don't have the fourth spot. But I can consume that. 
and that gives me another buff. That gives me 25% food consumption, negative, and 10, plus 10% 10 temperature. Now you'll notice that my temperature rating is going up. It's in the bottom down here. You'll notice that's going up. So if you're going into the Arctic, well, this is a beautiful thing to have. And the great thing about it is, is that you can have two of them running at the same time. So now I might overheat myself because I'm, I'm in 25 degree temperature and I'm using those two. But um, the whole point is, is that you can up your stamina. I, I like the cocoa because if you do the cocoa, Right, and then you can also do the the gamey meat, um, the the dried off the so you get 25% food consumption there, 25% food consumption there. This meter will never go down. I can't give it to myself now because I've already got these buffs going. But if I did, I could I could click it and I would get negative uh, 50%. So now my food consumption's down to four per minute, eight and five. If I'll put up a opposed to what this was before now these numbers haven't changed of course because i don't i haven't well i don't know a way to up your capacity because that's the enviro suit so i don't know a way to do that i don't even know i don't right now think it's in the game and they haven't made it an enviro suit other than they've made one with a food um spot so that you can continually feed yourself like the water and the oxygen they haven't made one that ups the number yeah so Anyways, what I wanted to test is something I've never actually done in this game. I am going to take coffee, cocoa, and now I'm going to drink a tea and see if that adds another buff. And guess what? Yes, it does. So you can run three of these buffs. Okay, and you can probably make another one. I, I don't have any... Uh, I don't think I can... I don't think I can do it fast enough. Of course, tea... Uh, where's my stuff? I don't think I actually have it. Yeah, it'll just fill it with water. Um, yeah. Anyway, the um, T buffs will last like like I said, it'll be 900 seconds, and uh, I'm now starting to overheat myself. Of course, getting pretty warm, but um, these uh, buffs add um, well 25% health regeneration, uh, 10 to max stamina, 10 stam regen and 10 to temperature so that's cocoa coffee and tea and then the last one is the gorse tea which is water consumption so if you could have all four going at once these are pretty hard the thermoses are steel you gotta you gotta have quite a bit of steel to make them um but that is the only difference in recipes between the electric stove and the biofuel stove Okay, so everything in the electric stove can be made in the biofuel stove except for these cocoa, tea, and coffee. But the great thing is, is that you have them right here. So if you don't feel like going to the Tier 4 fabricator, not a big deal. You don't need to. You don't gain anything from it. That's kind of what I wanted to show you. The recipes are the same. Uh, the numbers are the same. I just showed you coffee in the other one. So it's still 40 coffee beans to make a thermos. So you're not gaining yourself anything by spending the composites and everything else, and it's a big headache, yada, yada, to get to here. Not needed. Okay. It, it, I'm not saying that the electric stove isn't great. It is. I mean, it's watered. It's powered. Instead of using uh, biofuel, you use electricity. If that's a little easier, if you've got uh, uh, water wheels going and you're you're not feeding generators and whatnot, yeah, no, hey, great, great stuff. Uh I've made a bunch of selections of food that uh, I can make in this game um, because I'm in the forest. Oh, and the marble kitchen bench doesn't have anything new in it either, but it's a major convenience. It takes uh, and replaces the kitchen bench and the cooking station. Uh, you'll notice if you scroll back to my tier three, er, you'll notice that I had the kitchen bench, but I still needed the cook cooking station. Um, in the cooking bench or in the kitchen bench sorry you could do a bunch of new stuff with the jams and the and the jellies and, and the, the pickles and all the rest of that fun stuff but you still needed the cooking station to do the fat and the meat uh, now this one bench takes out both of those benches so it, nothing new but a major convenience to, um, tidies up the kitchen area quite nicely um, but that's about it um, I think that I basically covers it. I hope uh, this was uh, informative. I hope it helps you out. I uh, hope it gives you everything 
that I could give you. That's why I told you about the well rested, only because it helps for food and all the rest of that. I tried to touch upon everything um, in this. I chatted with my wife at one point in time, and she said to, if you're going to put points into the farming, uh, make sure you get the better food so it doesn't wilt. Other than that, have yourselves a good one, and I hope you liked it. Um, smash like, smash subscribe, uh, and leave me a chat down below if I missed anything. Thanks a lot.